Hello and welcome. In this video, I'll show you how to use the Azure DevOps REST API with PowerShell. Why PowerShell? Well, PowerShell is very powerful, as you all know, and we can use it to do quick iterative tries of our functionality. It is highly recommended that you use VS Code to do your PowerShell work because uh, it has IntelliSense debugging and it's very easy to use. Note that everything that I'm doing now, you can do in .NET. Your most important resource when you try to use PowerShell and the REST API is the Microsoft REST API site, which you can get to at this URL. This site has all the information you need to access the REST API for all the different sections of the Azure DevOps functionality. We have uh, everything from work items to releases, to Git, to the different profiles, the service endpoint, the symbol server, the test, the test plans. So there's information about pretty much everything you can get to in Azure DevOps, you can get through the REST API. And from this site, all the information is available. So when we do the demo a little bit later, we'll, uh, I'll show you a, a couple of those uh, different URLs so we can see what, what's available in here. Note that this is available both on-prem and in the cloud. There's a different versions of API, which we'll discuss soon. So a typical request uh, contains a verb and an instance URL, which we'll talk about in a minute, and the team project you want to access uh, with areas and resource and a particular version. So the instance URL is essentially the URL that you need in order to access resources. And depending if you're on the cloud or in TFS, that's going to change. Your team project obviously is the name of your team project. Your areas is, uh, are we uh, accessing release, work items, uh, all of those uh, major top areas we saw on the website. And the resource is a particular release in there. Is it a build information from one particular build? And then finally, the version API that uh, for the cloud, currently they're at version five maybe 5.1, and for TFS, you can navigate to this particular URL and you'll see, depending on which version of TFS you have, there's different version going from uh, three to, to five as well. So in order to access the REST API, you need to create an, a personal access token. So how do we do that? Uh, under the profile section of when you're logged into your Azure DevOps account, you can go to the security part and then create a new path with all the access that you actually want for that particular pad. And we'll do that before we actually start doing demos. So we'll use that pad to create a header, and then we'll send that header to all of our calls when we use the uh, uh, invoke REST API. And finally, if you're on premise, you can also use your default credential, the slash default credential at the end of your invoke REST API, that should work as well. So for the cloud, we need to access resource areas URL. And essentially, when you use this particular functionality, it will, you give it the name of your account and you give it the resource that you're interested in. So resource management, extension management, et cetera. And then the GUID for that particular service that you're looking for, and then it'll return a URL in the form that we have here. So for example, release management is gonna be HTTPS, vsrm.dev.azure.com slash your organization. And for extension management, for example, there's an extmgmt.dev.azure.com. And then for most functionality, it'll be dev.azure.com slash your organization. And on premise for TFS, it'll just be your TFS URL. So uh, uh, you, your organization colon 8080 slash TFS slash default collection, for example, would be the URL that you would use. And those actually are very important because they change and you don't know what they're going to be. So in order to do that properly, we essentially just do this call. So HTTPS dev.azure.com slash API slash resource area. We give it an area ID. So for example, for build, it would be the second line in the table below and then uh, the rest of the information in this page. And then uh, once we do that, it'll come back to us with the proper URL that we can use in our uh, calls. So for the rest of the video, I will do some demos. So we'll call, for example, the REST API to get a list of projects in your account. 
we'll call uh, the REST API to get the list of release attached to your particular project. We'll get the list of releases attached to this particular definition. Then we'll get a list of approvers uh, for each of the releases. And then finally, we'll uh, modify a release variable and we'll modify a work item just to show you how to update. So without further ado, let's go to our demos. All right, so first of all, we'll need to create a path in order to access the REST API for our project. So I'm going to go into my profile and under the security menu item, I will come here and then I will basically create a new token. We'll call it video. We'll leave it for 30 days. We'll give it full access and then we'll create that. So this creates a particular uh, path here that if we move off of this page, it'll be gone forever. So we'll keep that in our clipboard. All right, so let's jump into VS Code to do our demos. So we have the URL that I'm using for my Azure DevOps project. Then we use the personal access token we created a moment ago. Then we create our header by passing the token into a base64 uh, function and then basically using authorization equals basic and then the token that's been uh, base64. Then uh, we can actually start our first demo, which actually uses the uh, list of projects. To do that, we can actually go to the URL here and that'll give us a list of resource areas that we can see there's uh, quite a few and each one of them has a particular a GUID that we can use as a resource ID. So back here, I'm using the project uh, GUID in order to get the base area I need in order to call my, my things. So this calls a function called get URL. And this function up here is basically a call to the resource area function and basically doing an uh, invoke rest method. And when we get the result, we have the URL in question that we need and we move on. So we'll try and do our first demo. We'll run it in VS Code. So I'll put a breakpoint over here and we can just basically F5. After our code has started, we can F10 into our function and basically call the function here to get the URL. And when we see it comes back with for getting the list of project, it's basically just dev.azure.com slash our tenant. So we can now create a URL with this base URL to get the list of projects. And in order to see that, we can actually just go to this particular URL here and we'll see that to call and get the list of project, we need to do this particular slash API slash projects and then the version that we want. So if we go back down, we see that we have slash API slash projects and then the API that we want. And then we'll basically just call the uh, REST method again. And this will give us essentially a list of projects, F3 project in this tenant, and then basically we'll just list them. So parallel build, uh, TFS uh, to Git and then demo. So that basically is a very simple call to get the information about a project. So we'll reuse this list of project we just created for our second demo, which essentially is the use of those projects, but we're, get, we're gonna get release definitions for those projects. So we'll, first of all, we'll get into our loop here uh, with all of our different, our three projects. Uh, we wanna get the release management area ID, the base URL for the release management. And as we can see, this one is a little different. It uses vsrm.dev.azure.com and slash our, our uh, account. So now that I have the base URL properly, I can say, use that base URL, use the project, the first one, because we're in a loop right now. And then the rest is the call to get the definition uh, lists. So if we uh, go to this particular URL, we see all the different uh, information we can do to get a list of releases. So I'll continue with an F10 in here. This will call all the different release for the parallel build. There aren't none in this project. So if we keep going, we're gonna get our second project. There's also none in that project. And then the third one, which is our demo project, actually has a list of release definition. So we can actually just uh, basically go through it and get the name of it. So if I go to my project 
and I go back here and we get the demos project which actually has the release and we go to our pipeline we'll see that we have our demo dash ASP.NET core dash CI dash CD and that's the name of the uh, release that it got here so that's our second demo the third demo is going to go in and go a little deeper. So it'll first it'll get the list of release definitions. So same call we did just now. Once we have our release definitions, we actually can dig in and get a list of all the definitions that are attached to this particular release. So here we can see that we're still in that release definition. And I'm going to call the API that's going to say, get me uh, list of releases for a particular release definition, right? So now I have the release definition that I have and I can just dig in here and I'll see that I have uh, four, five release that were done for this particular release. And then this function just says it's gonna be release three, four, five, six, and seven. So if we go back to our project again, we'll see that we have release two, three, four, five, six, and seven, which are shown over here. And the reason why we only see five, uh, because you saw on the site there, there seems to be a few more, is because when we made the call, we said return only the last five here. That was uh, um, an addition we can add to our URL to basically uh, not get all the release, but get a particular list of release. So essentially that's our third demo. Our fourth demo is a little bit different because now we have to dig in each one of those release definition and actually get to releases for that definition. And then if one of those release was actually approved by an approver, I'd like to list the name of that approver. So we're going to go again and we're going to do essentially the same thing we've been doing. So the first two projects don't have any release definition. So we're going to skip those two. And then the third one actually has the demo project in here. And it says that it found one release definition. It's going to list that release definition over here. And then we'll dig in and we'll get all the releases for that definition. So essentially what we've been doing for the last uh, two demos, but now we're gonna actually dig into each one of those releases and then in each one of those environments for those release. And then we're gonna list the, um, for each one of those environments, we're gonna look at the pre-approval uh, uh, section of that release and look to see if uh, it was not automated so uh, with releases, you can basically say that you want to have uh, an automatic um, approver. So basically it's automated. It just goes off and it, it does its deployment without actually having a stop for an approver. And uh, it, so it needs to be automated and approved status of approved. And if both are true, then go ahead and write who actually did that. So we'll basically just run through this and we found that release four actually was approved by me on such and such a date. All right, so this is really interesting because the REST API gives you that information and, and much more as you can see, but uh, there's no report in VSTS to actually give you that kind of information. So actually using PowerShell to get that information and maybe save that as a CSV file or uh, another JSON payload in order to do another report for somebody is very important, very interesting that you can actually do that. So we'll keep moving. We'll go to our fifth demo. And our fifth demo essentially is we're going to say we're going to update a release variable into our release. So if we go to our release and we edit it, we'll see here that this one has some variable and the first variable is called demo and then it has a value called old value. So we'll modify this value to be another value. So we're going to do uh, pretty much everything we did, the same thing we've done for the last two or three demos. And we're actually going to dig in all the way to here. So I'll just put a breakpoint over here and just run through uh, because we've seen that before. And now that I've actually uh, am here, 
One of the call that we want to do is we want to get environments. We want to expand the environment's information because by expanding that, we can actually go and get environment variables that are part of this environment. So for each one of those environment, I only have one here, which is dev. So as I'm going into, I can actually dig in and look at all the environments and look at all the variables attached to this particular environment. So if we go here and we look at variables, we'll see that there's one called demo and it has a value of old value. So first of all here I'm checking, is there a variable called demo? And if there is, just write me the value of what it was there before. So it was old value before. We'll modify that to be new value. We'll save all this and then we'll call an update so that we modify the actual release and then we'll check in the result if uh, it's a new value now. So now it says new value, which is the value we've put here. If we go to the website and we actually refresh this, we'll see that now the variable is gonna be called new value. So that changed it directly on the site. So for the last demo, we're gonna do, a, we're gonna call a work item and we're gonna modify the title of it. So we need to get the work area ID, uh, GUID, and then get the base URL for it. And we can see that the base URL essentially is dev.azure.com and our project. And we're gonna basically fix it to work item number one, which if we go to our project, we can actually see uh, in our boards, we'll have uh, work item number one is a demo feature here. And what we wanna do is we wanna change the title of this and add a plus demo at the end. So essentially we're going to call the work item to get the actual work item payload. And then we're gonna modify the body for this. We're gonna get the value of the title field and we're gonna add plus demo at the end. And then basically we're gonna update that. So I'm just gonna run through this again. Uh, we're going to get the work item. So if we look at this work item, we see the list of fields. It's so all the fields that we have here, including the title, which says demo feature. We're going to create a new body for this. So this says uh, the before title is demo feature. We're going to change the title of this call and then just basically get the title again. And we see it's called demo feature plus demo. And if we look here and we refresh our browser, we can see that we have demo feature plus demo. So as you can see, using PowerShell to call the REST API is quite simple and it's very powerful. We can run through, do some debugging and actually get all the tailored information that we need in order to create other reports, specific custom tasks, anything that we need to talk to TFS and or Azure DevOps, can be. You can, we can use PowerShell to do it. So thank you for listening. See you next time.